Hello, and welcome to this CNCF webinar on how to use infrastructure from code to deploy consistently to Amazon ECS, EKS, and Lambda. So I'm here with my colleague Asif to talk to you about this today. But before I, we do introductions, I just want to ask Asif, like, how often do you have to actually deploy across these environments? Yeah, so it is uh, very common for larger enterprises to have a mixed or a hybrid deployment, meaning uh, some parts of the applications could be containerized that are getting deployed either on ECS or EKS, and any new features or any new um, uh, test features uh, that are being added as part of the applications typically get deployed these days on the serverless infrastructure because of the fact that the developers want to quickly iterate and deploy that. So it has become increasingly common to have an application that has um, majority of its core could be running on containers, but so-called the peripheral services or features or capabilities could be running on Lambda. Awesome. Well, now let's move on to those introductions so you know who's actually here to speak to you. I'm Danielle Cook. I'm a CNCF ambassador, and I'm also a VP at AppCD. And Asif, would you like to introduce yourself? Sure, I'm Asif Awan. I'm one of the co-founders and chief product officer at AppCD. I've been in the enterprise space for over 25 years, actually going on <laughs> to 28 now. Um, you yourself. Uh, <laughs> yeah, it ages me. Um, um, and in uh, all those years, I have built enterprise products and solutions. Awesome. So before we kind of jump into the consistency, we want to give you the definition of infrastructure from code. So it might not be something that you've heard of, or maybe you have heard of it and you're interested in learning more. So you have definitely come to the right place for that. So infrastructure from code really puts an application at the core of your infrastructure. So rather than creating infrastructure and then retrofitting the application in, what you're doing is you're looking at the the application code and building the infrastructure based on what it actually needs. And when you do infrastructure from code, you wanna auto like include all of the least privileges, best practices, well-architected framework, et cetera, so that you are building the best infrastructure based on what your application really needs. Asif, do you wanna add anything to that? No, that pretty much covers it, you know. So the key points or the takeaways uh, or the benefits of infrastructure from code are the fact that the, the infrastructure related needs are inferred directly from the application source code itself. The original application source code without the developers or anybody else having to go back and add any annotations or use any special SDK calls to generate the infrastructure as code. So that's the key distinction of the approach that AppCD has taken. Awesome. So let's dig a bit more into the benefits of infrastructure from code. And so we kind of went through, there's many benefits, but we wanted to highlight three today. So around being streamlined, standardized, and context aware. So Asif, why don't you start off by talking to me about why infrastructure from code is more streamlined and why that benefits an organization? Absolutely. <clears throat> So the very first advantage, as I was just alluding to, is that as a developer, um, it could be a Lambda a developer or a developer um, uh, who has uh, built the business logic that will eventually get deployed on AWS, EKS, or ECS. All they have to do is just write the code. They don't have to learn infrastructure as code, meaning they don't have to learn about Terraform. They don't have to acquire the expertise about Helm chart or even maintain them. So the infrastructure from code right off the bat acts as a very good on-ramp for the developers to just quickly start deploying and testing their application. That is number one. Number two, uh, the second advantage, and this is something that we are realizing or uh, we have been realizing at AppCD as uh, we are giving um, demos or uh, we do POCs or POVs and so on, that many a times, um, the app, the application uh, team have been or or uh, yeah the 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 team that is responsible for deploying the applications, they are using templates that are no longer compliant or 
A, are compliant with the policy. B, they do not no longer match with the resource or the platform resource needs of the application. What that means is that I'll give a very specific example that uh, uh, we went into this particular customer and we just uh, did the IFC from their application source code. And they realized that our uh, infrastructure as code files, they, it did not have any references to the S3 bucket. But they were using a template, which was pretty old template, which was still provisioning the S3 bucket that probably the very first version of the application was using. So that is something that re uh, refers to what you are, uh, what you have on your slide here, Daniel, which is being context aware. So as the application goes through various different, different iterations of uh, or various different versions along its life cycle, IFC ensures that that context which is there in the application is carried all the way into the um, IAC or the deployment files and hence provide that consistency. Um, the, the key point about streamlining is that going back to uh, my, my very first uh, point about the developers, not having to learn anything about infrastructure as code. They do not have to worry about how the resources need to be configured. They do not have to even learn or worry about how the IAM policies or permissions that go along with them need to be created and managed, okay? While at the same time, they can be guaranteed and assured that whatever version of application they are testing is the one that is going to get deployed with the same set of deployment files. And these deployment files will have the security, compliance, governance, all the best practices policies already baked in. So now think about it from a de developer's perspective that I, as a developer, my expertise is in coding the business logic. And that is what I need to worry about. That's what IFC provides to the developers and by extension to their enterprises and whoever needs to worry about managing the lifecycle of the deployment files, like the platform or the DevOps engineers, they can do that seamlessly. Well, and it's not just on the technical side. So one of the things I do at the CNCF or as you know, in my ambassadorship is I co-authored the cloud native maturity model. And we talk about the business value and being able to communicate the business value of tech. And so if you're streamlining your development life cycle, you're actually getting features to market faster, which the business likes. If you are doing standardization across your infrastructure and application, you are creating more security in your organization. And finally, context where you're cutting down on the back and forth that can be expensive when you have multiple teams and people. Um, you don't want a slow process. You don't want one that requires loads of back and forth. So there are major business benefits to the organization, business or benefits to the developer, benefits to the platform teams. It can help across all. Absolutely. So, so kind of moving on, you know, where does infrastructure from code fit? So, you know, we really see it at the intersection of DevOps or, or, or developers and DevOps. So, you know, it should fit within your existing pipelines. You should not have to recreate the wheel. Your developers should be able to write their code, ship it, use infrastructure from code without a major lift, and then just get it into your CI CD pipeline. So, Really, it's not recreating what you're doing. It's adding a step that cuts down on days, weeks, in some cases, months, um, that really, again, gets you to market faster. So kind of moving on, we'll talk about, let's just dig in a little bit deeper to the difference between infrastructure as code and infrastructure from code. So Asif, over to you. Absolutely. The key distinction is that infrastructure as code focuses on the infrastructure, as the term suggests, right? Basically, what you're doing is uh, whoever is doing that, be it a developer or a DevOps engineer or a platform engineer, you're defining infrastructure that is going to be suitable for the application. Versus in case of infrastructure from code, it's basically you. your focus is on the application, which is how it should be. So the other uh, way to express the difference is that it's infrastructure from app for applications is what IFC provides versus application for infrastructure. And with the infrastructure as code approach, the problem is that whenever you are focused on infrastructure, you end up using templates. You end up applying security and compliance policies on those templates, which by definition mean that they are generic, they are meant for a class of applications and hence not specific to a particular application. Whereas moving on to the other side, infrastructure from code, because the focus, as I just mentioned, has 
I mean, right from the beginning is on infra, uh, on the application itself and the, its inherent needs on the infrastructure, that focus is what drives the creation of infrastructure as code or the deployment files. And hence, as we just talked about in the previous uh, couple of slides, that the context awareness throughout the various different versions or iterations of the life cycle of the application is carried forward and is kept in sync with the actual application code in the case of infrastructure from code. Awesome. And I think, you know, to just kind of dive a little bit deeper on templates for a second, you know, I know that it's something that loads of platform teams are adopting and people are using, but it's really important the difference here because templates go out of date. You know, everybody knows that and they can go out of date so fast. But because of our nature of let's copy and paste this, this worked last time, when you're using templates for infrastructure as code, you're going to have security issues. Whereas infrastructure from code, as we call out here, like it really does provide that security layer because every single time you deploy or um, you know send your, ship your code out, we are looking or you are looking at what are the security standards that need to be in place now. So moving on, we're gonna dig into, you know, looking at ECS, EKS and Lambda. I always have to say those things slow because I'm always like, I want to make sure I get, get the initials right. Um, so, you know, there's kind of three main options we're going to talk about today. And, you know, it is ECS, EKS and Lambda. Um, I'm going to click to the next slide. And then, Asif, do you want to start talking about the benefits of them? Um, and we can kind of go on. Yeah, so... Uh, uh, taking a much higher level perspective, right? I mean, in uh, today's day and age, when people talk about cloud native application, they sort of uh, make the application or at least the deployment of the application fall into one of the two broad buckets, right? Either it's Kubernetes or serverless, right? So of course, uh, Kubernetes applications are containerized applications, right? So that is where Amazon has ECS, their original uh, container uh, uh, service support or container orchestration layer support. And then EKS is the one that is Kubernetes based. So from the perspective of standardizing the deployments and being able to enforce the enterprise's security, compliance, governance policies consistently, the problem, if I may just spend a moment defining the problem is that in case of Amazon ECS, the typical set of deployment files that are used are cloud formation based. In case of Amazon EKS, it's a combination of cloud formation or could be Terraform and Helm, right? Uh, and then again for Lambda, because Lambda has its own set of services for deployment that, um, uh, that AWS provides, such as AWS SAM, right? And there is something called AWS Chalice. So, and those are primarily, or uh, they natively support cloud formation. So trying to get an enterprise uh, DevOps team or the platform team, their hands around all of these various different dimensions and attributes of the deployment is the problem that we are trying to address with AppCD. And the way we address it is that the first thing is that across all of these um, deployments, regardless of whichever deployment paradigm or the compute paradigm is being used, AppCD, using the IFC approach with AppCD, you can get Terraform files plus Helm charts, okay? So now, because of the fact that the security policies and the compliance and the governance standards are already baked in, in terms of enforcing the policies, in terms of enforcing those standards, now you've gotten one single place or a platform through which you can do that enforcement or you can apply that enforcement without having to change any of your existing CI or CD pipelines. Awesome. And so let's dig a little bit deeper of like benefits in terms of what we've called out here, best design, uh, right provisioning, security and compliance. And let's focus on best design first. Talk to me about that. Yeah, so uh, AWS has something called most uh, large cloud service providers uh, because they offer 
vast number of services, they have uh, something called well-architected framework uh, recommendations, okay? So uh, as part of uh, our offering, AppCD provides um, the enforcement or basically the usage of that uh, well-architected framework. So that's the whole point about using the well-architected framework. We provide the right set of resources based on the needs of the application. Okay, so there isn't any over provisioning of resources, all right, which leads to the second point. And then again, as we have been talking about, over provisioning is not just from the perspective of taking a particular snapshot of the application source code at a, a given time and carrying it forward. Uh, IFC continues uh, uh, in lockstep. Uh, with the application lifecycle. What that means is as the application code is changing and AppCD gets invoked to do IFC or basically auto-generate the deployment files or IAC code files, um, uh, every single uh, version of the application uh, is getting its own corresponding deployment files. And then uh, security and compliance uh, standards and guardrails, uh, depending on how they have been defined, they are always baked in. Which means if there is any new uh, uh, security policies uh, that has been introduced, or if there is a new attribute within a, uh, a particular AWS cloud resource has been introduced, accordingly, as the uh, IAC files get generated, AppCD will include, if at all it's required by the, the security policies or the compliance uh, standards to be included in those uh, uh, generated files. Awesome. So we're going to dig in to a little bit about AppCD's solution around generative infrastructure from code. Now, I will say, like, there are different solutions for infrastructure from code, and Gartner just included infrastructure from code on their hype cycle for platform engineering 2024. So it's really exciting. It is a area that is developing, and, you know, there are options on the market we provide this solution and it is all around generating your infrastructure from code again with no need to change your application code and that was core to us as we were putting together AppCD. so i'm going to give you a quick overview of how we approach it and then also is going to show a short demo on AppCD solution so when we look at infrastructure from code our first step is we will analyze your application code. So we'll look to um, understand any required dependencies that you coded in your application. We will then infer any of the you know, API, core infrastructure, ingress, egress, all of those things that we can understand from your application code. From this analysis, we'll then create a visualization of your deployment architecture. So you can see exactly what you're trying to build and we allow you to drag and drop resources to enhance this architecture, right? Like you might know that you wanna add something that you didn't put in your application code and you can easily do that. But while we're doing that, we also validate that you can make that connection or you can add that component or resource. Um, and if a connection can't be made, we won't allow you to export any infrastructure from code. Um, so then, once you are happy with your visualization, once everything is uh, signed off, if you will, we then generate your Terraform or Helm charts. And we do that with all the standards that your platform teams or your organization has in place. So this is things like least privileged access control. It's any of the AWS Azure policies that should help to secure your application or make you more compliant or like the well-architected framework. And then finally, if there are compliance standards your organization needs to adhere to, you can select those. And so you can make sure that your infrastructure is PCI compliant, HIPAA compliant, GDPR, SOC 2, all of those things. So that was my very quick tour of this. What we're gonna do now is this quick demo. So now we're gonna hope that all of this works smoothly. So I'm going to stop sharing, and then Asif is going to start sharing, and um, we're going to, as my good friend uh, says, we're going to pray to the demo goddesses to make sure it all works perfectly. <laughs> all right. Thank you so much, Daniel. Uh, are you able to see my screen? Just ensure that everybody else yep. can. All right. So let's get started. 
So the very first thing, as you can see on the screen, as we have been, Daniel and I have been talking about the fact that I see that that uh, AppCD uh, or, or uh, uh, the particular approach of IFC that uh, AppCD supports start from the original application source code itself. So it's it should be no surprise that we support all of these authentication mechanisms because uh, that is where the source code is stored in these version control systems. So let me start by using my uh, <clears throat> login credentials uh, for GitHub. So there are a couple of things that I wanted to quickly show and then get into the, uh, the actual demo flow. So what we support is a concept of the very first thing is obviously all or some of the, uh, the uh, source code repositories for which you want the IAC files or the deployment files to be auto-generated, you want to onboard them to AppCD. So that is step, step number one. What you see um, on the screen um, are basically all the repos that have already onboarded. Then we also have a, the concept of uh, app stacks, you know? So these are basically um, the applications that have already been onboarded and for which AppCD has gone ahead and created or generated the infrastructure as code files. So let me get into the demo with that quick background. So this is what the first time user experience, uh, um, if the user has so chosen, could be like. So here, as you can see that there are already some demo repos that I've already onboarded, as I mentioned. So let me pick one of these demo repos, okay? So let me start by picking up actually the AWS one, not this one. So in this particular flow, I am what I'm going to do is I'm going to show how easily and quickly the uh, Terraform as well as Helm charts could be created for AWS ETH deployment. So we support various different kinds of configuration, as you can imagine, because uh, someone in the audience must be thinking that, hey, the source code uh, or a version of a source code is not sort of a monolithic chunk that is sitting in one particular location. There are branches, there are tags, there are various different aspects. And would I be able to generate the deployment files for that specific version of the, the application? The short answer is yes. And that is why you see all of these kinds of configurations out here. Then the next step, is choosing the target deployment um, uh, stack uh, or compute stack, if you could call it that. So let me go ahead and choose EKS. And this is where, right, um, let me quickly show the various different policies or the standards as uh, uh, Daniel was talking about earlier that we support out of the box. So this is the kind of configuration that would typically be done by the DevSecOps team or the security team or the DevOps team. In fact, even choosing the deployment platform for a certain class of applications could be done as what RCD refers to as governance pre-configuration, meaning the platform team can can choose or, or put a stake in the ground that all of our applications need to get deployed on EKS only, or all of our applications need to get deployed in a combination of uh, EKS and Lambda. And similarly, the security team can define the set of policies uh, that need to be applied to all the application. That is what we have been alluding to as uh, the consistency across whatever be the deployment paths, whatever be the deployment targets. That's what AppCD provides. And as you can see, there are various different policies that we support out of the box. We do support, uh, um, uh, uh, we do have the support for custom policies as well that the enterprises could create and add. So the next step then is, uh, let me give it a stack name, CNCF, EKS. So what's happening in the background is the static code analysis, uh, as uh, uh, Daniel mentioned in one of the slides about IFC, is that this is the visual, uh, uh, this is the analysis part. So th think of our platform as this is happening as having three main components. There is an analyzer and a generator, which are very obvious, obviously. And then uh, there is a visualization part, and there you go. So what uh, AppCD has done in the background is that it went through the, the entire source code that it was pointed at, or the specific version of the application source code that it was pointed at, and it inferred all the dependencies of the um, of the application on the resources. What you see as the red icon here or the errors are basically not really errors, but these are the mandatory fields that are required for the IAC to be generated. Okay, so let me click on one of them. 
And as you can see, the region is something that, uh, that uh, is required to be filled out for the IAC file to get created. Now you could get two different kinds of um, uh, errors here. One is a policy verification error, which cannot be uh, bypassed. And these are the resource attribute value related errors or validation checks that, um, that could be bypassed. And the way you can bypass is uh, click on this X thing and you can choose to parameterize or as I like to call it, variableize that particular parameter. Okay, so let me just quickly do this. Uh, let me mention US East here. East one, save, radius, let me call it test. And as you can see, the information that I'm entering is something that obviously needs to be provided for in the form of variables or they need to be provided as absolute values or the real values uh, in the IAC files um, or the Terraform files and the Helm charts uh, for them to be used. And Asa, so, just to, to ask there, so like if we didn't do that, your developers still would have to specify that. They would just be doing it in their infrastructure as code and trying to find it and find, replace and whatnot versus we're just making it super easy to see exactly what you need. So there are two important points, right, to draw out. The first thing is that as a developer, when I come to the screen, I don't care about um, uh, the infrastructure as far as code files that are getting auto-generated by AppCD um, to be generic enough or templatized enough that it could be used across various different environments. What I worry as a developer is that uh, I just, I have an access to only one environment probably, the dev environment, and how quickly can I deploy? And that is why we have designed the UI uh, or the user experience in such a way that Asip as a developer can just go in, enter the information so that I don't even have to worry about the Terraform variable files or the Helm chart variable files and all of that. Which of course, the, when you're talking about the same set of deployment files being used across various different, different environments, that is something that is required, okay? So now that I've resolved those uh, those validation checks, uh, what has happened in the background is that the generator had got involved because there were no uh, errors or issues uh, uh, pertaining to the security policies, pertaining to the validation errors, and the code, uh, the, the set of deployment files have been created. Let me show uh, the details out here. So this is where, um, you, uh, as you can see, there are two different sections. There's a Helm section and a Terraform section. Terraform section is for provisioning the AWS platform resources. Helm section is for the compute of the uh, application itself, okay? Which is something, so I'm talking about this part versus the provisioning of these resources. Going back here, um, <clears throat> let me just click on the modules, as you can see. This is what you are talking about, right? Somebody having to create manually or somebody having to uh, go to Stack Overflow, pull out uh, um, uh, portions of the code based on the responses that you could have gotten as a developer or uh, picking up from various different template repositories that your DevOps team could be maintaining. So we are doing that auto-generating it as, as we have been talking about, uh, which is something which is uh, very specific to a version of an application code. And you can also see the corresponding policies that have been uh, applied to this particular generation process. Now, um, what you can do is that um, uh, some in the audience must be thinking that, uh, okay, um, then what do I do with this set of deployment files? So obviously you have the option of uh, just downloading it. One of the other things that we are working on, which are coming out in this release is uh, uh, for the developers to be able to configure uh, the deployment files to get pushed into the Git repository so that you can auto-trigger de your deployment pipelines, which could be Argo CD based as an example for Kubernetes workloads and so on. Let me, um, any uh, questions or anything that uh, you think uh, Daniel, I should have added? No, that's great. So one of the other things that I wanted to quickly show with all of this context is that, um, walk our audience through a similar flow for uh, uh, AWS Lambda as well, okay? So I have a Lambda repo here. It's a retro board. It's like a Kanban, typical Kanban kind of uh, board for discussions. So in this particular uh, repo, I've got uh, two, uh, three different Lambda functions for which the configuration is already done. 
and let me choose the lamb choose lambda as the the target um, deployment platform well so, and while you write the name i want to just call out that you know we have the same amount of policies that are being applied here and that is that consistency element so you know that both environments are having the following the right policies absolutely and uh, the same same step here as well because code is code. Uh, the analyzer is doing its job in the background. It is uh, doing the static code analysis, trying to pick up dependencies. And as it is doing that, a couple of things that I want to explicitly highlight. The okay. So as you can see, there are three different lambda functions. Okay, uh, this one are called a send Slack alert function. There is an email function and then an, an API function. And there are quite a few things that are happening here. This particular symbol indicates that, um, or an icon, um, like an electric bolt icon indicates that it's a trigger, okay? So we are automatically, our, our analyzer um, in AppCD is automatically detecting the triggers as well, right? And then what it is also doing is that um, it is also creating uh, the IAM policies. So this is the point that I wanted to mention or double click on regarding least privilege IAM policies. As a very simple example, let's say you have two different applications or two different microservices accessing the same storage bucket. And the first one is making read-only calls. And the second one is making all kinds of calls, read, write, whatever, manipulating the data. So what we, uh, at, uh, um, uh, the analyzer of AppCD, what it is doing is that as it is going through the source code, it is picking up those specific access, um, um, access, I mean, how the resources are being accessed. What that means is that when the generator uses that information, it is generating or it is granting the IAM privileges only for reading the storage bucket to the first microservice in my example. It is granting all the privileges, read write privileges, listing and all that to the second microservice. So that's what we mean by list privilege enforcement. And all of this complexity, the developer, as a developer, I don't have to worry about. Which even if I am an expert at writing Terraform, I may not be able to keep up with all the, the platform resource related configuration that is going on. You know? And one final thing that I wanted to show was that um, this is something that uh, Daniel alluded to uh, under visualize that if you want to drag and drop certain resources, let's say you want to drag and drop uh, API gateway or a load balancer, right? Or in this case, let's just say a DynamoDB, right? So now what you can do is you can, let me just uh, try to connect it, right? And this is what I was alluding to. You can define it, oh, if there is a trigger or if there is an IAM access because the, the Lambda function is writing or needs to write as part of taking uh, some actions, uh, it needs to create some entries in the DynamoDB, certain DynamoDB table. So this is where you can, as a developer or as an architect, if you choose, you can provide all the details you know, for the resources that you have added to the deployment architecture that has been recommended in a policy compliant way by AppCD. And finally, we also do support the concept of uh, um, comparing, visually comparing the difference in the topology, okay? So in the interest of the time, I'm not going to uh, create another version, but if I were to have, uh, have made uh, some changes to the application source code and created an app stack or triggered the creation of an app stack and hence the corresponding deployment architecture of the topology and the, uh, the deployment files, what you could do is, or I could do is compare the topologies uh, of the various different versions, okay? And that is something that uh, AppCD shows you that, hey, the ones in greens are the new resources or new connections that have been added, and the ones in red are the ones that have been removed, you know? So you get a very quick visual comparison, and that is what we have been talking about, which is as the life cycle of the application goes along, IFC goes along with it in lockstep, you know? And it is not like, unlike in case of IAC templates, basically once it is created, it is sort of uh, standing on the sidelines and watching and just being that, okay, I don't care whatever transformation the application is going through, but eventually my template has to be used. So IFC completely flips that whole concept uh, uh, over its head. Um, and the final point before we wrap it up that I would like to make is that the whole thing about IFC is 
infrastructure for application, meaning switching the focus on application, which means by extension, you're switching the focus on the business needs or the business requirement that the application satisfies. Whereas IAC has always been about um, uh, application for infrastructure, meaning infrastructure will get created and application need to sort of adjust or fit themselves into that infrastructure uh, through the use of templates. Awesome. Thank you so much for the demo. Um, if you stop sharing for a minute, I'll okay. just share all of you um, some links if you're interested. Um, you know, AppCD is free to use. So if you're a developer and you want to use it as your, you know, cheat sheet, if you will, um, come try it. Uh, Cloud.appcd.io. If you're building a cloud native application, if you work in an enterprise that has cloud native applications and you want to try this out because you use Terraform, you use Helm, it's a really straightforward way to cut down days, weeks, months, all of that. If you're interested in learning more about the details on, behind AppCD and further detail, we do have a solution overview. The link is at the bottom of the screen, appcd.com slash solution overview. So thank you so much for attending, for listening. Um, we look forward to seeing you all try. Thank you so much.